So um, I thought that I would uh, make a little YouTube about the past year, um, to 2023 in Port Alberni on Alberni weather, um, and uh, show you some of the stats and things in in addition to the summaries that I'll do uh, and I'll post on the blog. Um, <clears throat> there's often stuff that I, uh, that I kind of look through on the spreadsheets and stuff that I have, um, the uh, graphs that I, that I put up, um, and I thought you might like, uh, checking some of that out. So, um, so I'm going to show you kind of what I have as far as the data, um, and how that looks through, uh, the history of Alberni weather stations, uh, in the Alberni Valley, uh, so in both Environment Canada and then mine um, since 2005. So uh, so let's check this out. Um, 2023 was a pretty uh, pretty interesting year. Um, so this is my uh, this is my spreadsheet, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll zoom it out so you can see the whole thing. Um, but it it encompasses everything um, from the stations sort of of record in Port Alberni since 1900. So the blue is Beaver Creek. Um, that was the first station that uh, that appeared back in 1895. Uh, it started recording rainfall. Uh, and then in 1900, it started recording uh, temperature as well. Um, and then the city of Port Alberni, the old uh, station that was in the city of Port Alberni, I think around Argyle Street, um, and not necessarily at the, the city hall where it is now, because that came around in the 50s, but uh, but I believe it was in on Argyle Street was where the station was. Uh, in yellow is the Loopsy Coopsy, which is the, uh, the paper mill. Um, that's the name of the point there. Uh, it has a proper Indigenous name, which uh, which I think is Nuuk uh, I think, uh, or something along those lines. Um, my apologies, uh, but uh, but yeah, that uh, that's that yellow one. It's it's a fairly short record, but it was uh, right before they started using the Port Alberni SOMAS station, so it's a good analog to that one. Uh, in orange is the uh, Robertson Creek fish hatchery uh which came online in the 60s um and uh still goes on today though it is much less reliable unfortunately than it used to be um so uh, so there's that usually at least these days um at the end of the month uh it only has about half of the uh the last month's station data so uh like for for december there's only up to about the 15th um from the robertson creek station so those values aren't aren't complete yet um usually they seem to fill out um by the end of the next month uh for the previous but um but yeah so it, it's not uh, not it's certainly not an automated station uh like the port Alberni airport uh the red one here is somas so that's the uh, Port Alberni A station uh, that was online from uh, around 1960 until 19 uh, early 1990s. Um, purple is the uh, is the airport station, uh, the current station, official station for Environment Canada that came online in uh, in 1995 and continues today. Um, and has become much more reliable. Uh, they were having some issues a few years ago, but uh, but it's it's gotten a lot better, uh, and they've improved it quite a bit. And then in gray is uh, our two stations actually, uh, the Redford Station uh, at the old Redford School, um, which is still the building is still there on uh, Redford and Fourth and Fifth. Um, so that's uh, that's that data, uh, and then I have that included in with my data from Alberni Weather. It's I'm only a block away, um, so it's a pretty good analog there. So those are the stations that I track, um, and that I update every month. Uh, and I have, uh, like you can see on my um, tabs here, I have. 
summaries of all of the uh, stations. I have all of the data, uh, and then I have it split out by month so that I can create uh, the um, graphs that you see every month in the summaries. Uh, and I have it in um, seasons as well, summer, fall, winter, and spring. Um, the monsoon season, Ontario, uh, October to January, uh, and then uh, and then the annual uh, picture, which is what we'll show today. So that's sort of an over overview, since I haven't done this before. Um, that's kind of how, how I have it set up um, in my uh, in my spreadsheets. So I thought uh, we'll just go from top to bottom here in my graphs. Um, so let me zoom back in here so you can see it um, more clearly. Um, there we go. Do, do, do. So here's the, um, just get rid of this guy. No. Here's the graph for the extreme maximums uh, that we've seen through history. Um, the uh, the value for this year, uh, my station got up to 40.2. Um, the, uh, the official station that's in purple here, uh, we'll just go check to see what that was. That was 38.7. So uh, so that's purple. And then uh, and then Robertson Creek was in between that. So um, so I think we can see a fairly clear um, rise in these extremes. So this is the extremes for the year. So basically the the summer, uh, summertime extremes uh, and 2023 continues, uh, I believe, a pattern of rising uh, temperatures as far as extreme temperatures go. Uh, that's the heat dome at the top there. Um, that's obviously the highest temperature ever recorded in the Alberni Valley was during the heat dome. Uh, the Robertson Creek Station uh, particularly went uh, absolutely bonkers, uh, 45 degrees. Um, the official uh, temperature from the airport was uh, was just over 42, um, and uh, and mine was just below that. Um, so we're off of that extreme, thankfully. We didn't have another heat dome this year, um, but it still got very hot. Um, and uh, and you can see there's only although we we think of ourselves as often getting into the 40s uh, or near the 40s um this is a, that's a really um that's a that's a recent occurrence uh you know just in the past 10 20 years uh do we really hit those uh, upper 30s levels we've always been um at least around 30 as our as our high of the year, right? So you can see all the way back uh, into the Beaver Creek records in 1900, the first one there, it got up to 30, over 35 degrees. So so mid to low 30s is certainly not unusual. That's sort of our normal. Um, but I, I do believe that, uh, you know, while in the past, the Beaver Creek Station was was very, uh, very random between about 30 and, and 40, really in that whole range. Um, now we are not seeing anything um, uh, below about 35 as our annual uh, extreme. Um, you know, we, we see that's the, the average over the entire period is 35.9. Um, and we can see in the past 20 years here, um, it's all clustered over 35 degrees. Um, the, the, if you're ever, if you're wondering, uh, the, the lowest maximum we've ever had for a year. So the hottest it got in 1954 was only 28 degrees at the, uh, at the city of Port Alberni station, um, the old station. So. Uh, that I mean that that seems inconceivable now. Um, and there was another cool year in uh, 1975. Uh, actually, you know what? These these two, you can see this 1975 here. Um, that's Port Alberni Somas, and Robertson Creek was up at 35 on the same day. Um, so maybe there was fog 
uh, in Port Alberni. Uh, but, uh, but you can see the actual high in the valley was 35. So, uh, and the same thing in 1976, the actual high, it was actually reversed. Uh, Robertson Creek had a very cool value uh, for the same day, four degrees less. Um, down below 30 but the uh, but the valley was up over 35 so so uh, so even these two you can probably almost take those out um, as extremes uh, because uh, because the other stations were obviously much warmer um, so that uh, that low temperature you can see the uh, the the beaver creek station was at 31 that low of 28 in Port Alberti is uh, is certainly the lowest that I think we'll ever see in our lifetimes. Um, for those of you who are still alive, um, that would have seen that in 1954. So, um, so yeah, so our reality here is certainly extremes that uh, that are consistently over 35 degrees Celsius, uh, and I think that's that's going to keep marching up uh, upwards as we go. Um, next here is the uh, the other end of the spectrum, uh, extreme minimums. Um, so for 2023, um, we were uh, we were just below uh, the maximum, so the highest that we've seen, um, at least for my station. Um, you can see we were we were in amongst those highs. So uh, so my extreme minimum was. Uh, minus five, uh, minus five point nine. Uh, the uh, the official official station at the airport, uh, which usually does get colder um, than the uh, than any stations in town because it's in the valley, um, and uh, and has uh, has cooler temperatures there. It's not moderated by the water as much, so it got down to minus nine, uh, which is still pretty warm for an extreme low. Uh, and Robertson Creek got down so far down to minus eight, so similar to the to the airport. So um, so again, this is this is on the warmer side. Certainly, um, we can see the uh, the ultimate uh, extreme here for the valley was minus twenty five back in uh, nineteen fifty. Um, that's at the Beaver Creek station, and the Port Alberni station was looks like just around minus twenty two, maybe. Um, so, uh, so that's the extreme, uh, on the low end. And, uh, and again, I, I don't see that happening unless we were to have, um, a really intense, um, sort of reverse heat dome instead of, uh, instead of heat, it being an Arctic vortex came down, a polar vortex came down, um, and, uh, and really put us in a deep freeze for, uh, for weeks. Um, I can't see us ever reaching anything close to that minus 25 mark. Um, and it's certainly not something that, uh, that we've seen. The, uh, the coldest that, uh, that I remember as a kid uh, was back in the 80s. Um, these uh, 19, this would be 1982, um, just below minus 15. I remember that as a kid uh, growing up. And there was another one uh, around there in 2000 and uh, that would be 2008. Um, so that was down below minus 16 at the airport, at least. Um, Robertson Creek was a little warmer, but uh, but yeah. I don't think we'll uh, we'll see uh, anything like that. Certainly not this winter. Um, so 2023, um, we can see uh, uh, we were we were certainly above the average for extreme minimums. Um, next up here, I'll just pull out the others. <clears throat> next up is the uh, annual rainfall. So this is a big one because. Um, we've been in a drought, uh, certainly for this year, uh, and going back into 2022. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we are still well below average, uh, for the year for rain. So, um, again, going back into the records, you can see that, uh, our average over the past, you know, 120 years, uh, is around 1700 millimeters in a year. Um, and this year we are below that average. Uh, the airport, Robertson Creek, were very similar. Um, our mine was just a little below, uh, which is pretty standard. So, um, 
the uh, the airport was at 1500 um, which is a little better than it did last year uh, last year 2022 was 1397 um, same thing at Robertson Creek it was 1391 uh, this year 1560 and 1534 at the airport so um, mine are a little lower than that um, which is pretty standard for me um, but uh, but again 1100 and, and 1200 um, so a little better than last year um, but uh, but not um, back to average unfortunately so uh, let me get back up to it here. There we go. So not back up to that average. Um, we're not uh, regaining what we lost um, last uh, in the last year as far as uh, sort of recharging those those water systems. So uh, and now we're having uh, because we're having such a warm uh, fall and start to the winter, um, we're not seeing any snowpack uh, build up. So that's that's going to be a problem going into the spring. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's our, uh, that's our rainfall, certainly below average. Um, and again, th the rainfall is much harder to see, uh, kind of a pattern. Um, if you were to, to look at it, um, as a whole, I would say that there was a, a general pattern of slight increases in rainfall in, uh, in, in the Valley from 1900 or uh, or maybe 1910 up to about the 1990s um and then we really peaked around the middle of the 1990s here um and uh, and now i i think we've really been in a in a regime of lessening uh, annual rainfall and that's obviously a problem so um so we certainly haven't seen um, anything up into the nearly 3,000 millimeters uh, is what Robertson Creek recorded in 1996. Uh, that might be including snow, actually. That might be precipitation. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a massive number. Um, again, 2010, uh, which uh, was the last big El Nino. Um, remember, if, the, if you remember the Olympics, there was a lot of concern about snow. Um, during Olympics, um, there was plenty of rain that year, so um, so that was a that was another big one. Um, but uh, but since then, um, you can see there's there that sort of was a peak thanks to El Nino. Um, but uh, we've really been been on a bit of a downward trend, so um, that's uh, that's a bit of a concern for sure. And our our lowest point um, was uh, was here in. Uh, what is that? 2012, 2013, uh, 2013. That is. So there's some low uh, values there. Um, so we wanna we wanna stay away from that. Um, but uh, but we are approaching it. So uh, anytime we get, you know, to a thousand millimeters or less um, for a whole year, that's uh, that's that's a very low year. So um, so we're unfortunately we're 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 still pretty close to that. You know, we, we recovered a little bit from last year. Um, so that's rainfall. Um, next up is annual mean temperatures. Um, so this is the average uh, of the day um, throughout the year. So what's the average temperature during the day? <clears throat> we, were, uh, we were a little above average for this year. Um, and I think here the trend is becoming really clear. Um, it was fairly steady up to around 1950, 1960. Um, and then we're starting to see uh, a rise here. Uh, very gradual, but still, I think, very, uh, very obvious rise um, in mean temperatures. So this is just the daily average, just your average old day. Um, what's the temperature going to be? Um, sort of averaged out throughout that whole day. And now we're uh, um, the top uh, ever recorded for a day was 11.7. Um, that's back in 1934. Um, and the 30s were a notably warm period. Um, but we uh, we're certainly coming up close to those now. So uh, so the past uh, 10 years, 15 years, 
uh, we've really been in that range. Um, and we're starting to, to, I think we're probably going to move up over top of it. So, um, so this year, uh, my station and the Robertson Creek station were right around 11 degrees, um, as the overall, uh, average temperature for the whole year. Uh, the official, uh, station was a little cooler than that, maybe 10 and a half. Um, so, so, uh, that's uh, that's the look for 2023. Um, average maximum temperature. So this is the average of all of the daily maximums um, throughout the year. Um, and again, uh, this is common that you've seen in, in other videos I've made about uh, the trends over time. Uh, we see that it's, it's pretty steady um, and fairly random in the uh, pre-1960 era. Um, and then once we start to get the modern stations, uh, we start to see that rise, that gradual rise. Um, and, uh, and we're certainly, um, you can see those maximums for this year, 2023. Uh, the uh, airport, if I go over to the data here, uh, the average uh, for the airport was 15.9. Um, for my station was 16.5 and for the Robertson Creek it was 16.4. So, um, so that's, uh, that's a, that's a high, um, that's a pretty high value. So, um, you can see that we're, uh, we're up above, uh, what we've seen since around 1955. We're really, we're really up above there. Um, these, stations, the high temperatures is really where the older stations had some trouble. Um, so that's why you see them sort of all over the place um, and uh, and some really high uh, values here. They may or may not be valid. Um, these temperatures have never been uh, never been normalized by Environment Canada. Um, but it's generally agreed that after 1950 they started putting in uh, more reliable stations um, and uh, and then today as well. So um, so that's why you see them sort of tighten up a little bit. I think um, in the in the data, so so I think we're still seeing that that rise, um, and twenty twenty three um, is uh, is the warmest since uh, since twenty fifteen, which was twenty fifteen was uh, was one of the warmest uh, ever uh, in the world uh, as far as average temperatures. So uh, so that makes uh, that makes sense there. So next up is annual average minimum. Um, and what we'll see here is again, continuation. And, uh, like I said, the high temperatures was really where the older stations were having, uh, that uh, that's where they had problems, um, ventilation, that kind of stuff. Um, low temperatures, that's less of an issue. So I think here you can actually see the trend, the rising trend of temperatures in the Al Alberni Valley throughout uh, the uh, the entire 120 year record. So there's a pretty clear, you can actually see the record now is long enough. We can actually start to see some variations, some sort of decadal variation, these lows, and then it goes up around the thirties, back down into the forties and fifties and back up into the sixties and then down in the seventies. And then it lay, uh, as a bit of a, as a bit of a, a straight stretch there, and then and then back up uh, into the 2010s, 2020s. But all the while, uh, we can really see how it's starting to rise. Um, so we're we're creating higher highs uh, and uh, and raising our lows, raising that floor. <coughs> So for 2023, uh, you'll see uh, there's a big uh, difference here in the uh, in the city values, Alberta weather. Um, so the city and the uh, the the water in general um, really keeps us much warmer than the uh, than the valley stations in Robertson Creek and the, and the airport. And you can see that's the same for when uh, the Redford station was uh, was active back in the 60s. 
um, it had consistently higher minimum temperatures than the uh, than the Robertson Creek station. So Lipsy Coopsy, which was just nearby down at the paper mill, quite similar. Um, Redford, a little higher. Robertson Creek it was was lower. So that that valley station always lower. Um, but again, uh, we can see that rising floor, especially since the 1940s, when we had that um, when we had sort of the the low point in uh, in that decadal um, rise and fall. Um, if you take it from that low, you can really see it coming up. But even from the uh, from the midpoint here, um, you can see our our minimum temperatures really rising. Um, especially for the valley here, um, you know, the valley average minimum temperatures back in uh, in the early 1900s and mid 1900s um, were down nearly to freezing. So that's the average, you know, minimum every day um, was around freezing uh, throughout the whole year. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty significant. Now, uh, you know. That's, uh, that's looking more like three degrees or four degrees um, for the valley stations and up towards seven. <laughs> um, the highest, again, 2015, the global uh, global highest for the uh, um, for pretty much all temperatures um, and 2016 as well. So, um, so we're, we're still very much in that high range, uh, around seven degrees. Um, and I think we'll, we'll continue to see that. So that's, um, that's our sort of walk through 2023 again, um, maximums higher than average, um, extreme minimums higher than average annual rainfall lower than average and continuing likely a downward trend annual mean temperatures continuing upward higher than average reaching up towards those extremes um, average maximum temperatures again up in the top range that we've ever seen um, and annual average minimums um, in amongst the cluster of high um, for uh, for that, so uh, we're really seeing on the annual basis, um, and now even month to month, um, we're really seeing uh, higher and higher uh, values for temperature um, in our in our valley. Certainly, as climate change uh, continues and and the, the the world continues to warm, so um, so that's it for twenty twenty three. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, and look for the blog post with all of the data and the numbers, uh, records, and, uh, and the summary for December on the blog. Um, and I'll have the, uh, the time lapse up there as well. Okay, see you later.